Welcome back everyone, I'm Zell, and today we're going to get a look at the Best Tech Thorn. And I had to do this on camera because I know you guys have already commented on the What's Inside video telling me that I forgot to do that. So there you go. I put the 85 weight down in the detent hole. I even wiped off the top of it. And then I worked it in a little bit because you're seeing it right now. There you go. So let's talk about the Thorn. Guys... I know that people have this uh, fuss about best tech in the 12C27. I don't think you should be fussing about it. I think you should be looking at the other aspects of the knife at the price. Remember, we're talking 52 bucks here. And well, let's just go through the measurements before we actually get into looking at the knife because I think they're pretty important for this price point. 4.35 inches closed, 0.57 thick, which is a bit thick, but not bad. A spine to spine of 1.13, nice and thin. See how well that thing slides down in there? An overall length of 7.3. And here is the kicker blade length of 2.98. I measured that about a dozen times and I came up with under three inches every time. We got an edge length of 2.87, blade stock thickness of 0.127 and a weight of 3.9 ounces with a grip length of a nice 3.53. So what does that give us? That gives us a small knife with a legal in many, many places blade length that is a hefty knife with a good ergonomic handle and a decent blade steel. And now let's just get a look at it and we'll go through all the normal stuff. Getting a look at this guy, we've got a nice sheet of G10. We've got, like I said before, they're doing some more milling on these knives. We've got some nice traction, gription milling there, some nice gription milling there, and I like that a lot. Now, they're doing the same thing they did on the Beluga. They've got this uh, pocket clip stuck up on this little G10 block, I and mean, I get that. It's easier, possibly easier to make because you can make a gazillion of these little G10 blocks in a big hurry, and you don't have to do as much bending of the pocket clip. You know, maybe it saves them some time. I don't know. Uh, it seems to work fine and carry. Although I could see some people possibly being a little uh, not so great, not so into it. But uh, in actual use, it worked fine. Uh, rolling it around the back, you know, we've got, again, got a nice jumping pattern there on the backspacer, G10 backspacer. We have shined up our liners which i actually kind of like i like that uh blades laying down in there nice and square if i can get it to show up on the camera there you go it's in there nice and square we've got that t8 pivot back on this one now it is a free spinner just like the other ones but as you'll see when we do the grampus the grampus has went to a uh, d-shaped pivot and it's still the same look but it's got a D shape in it. So maybe that'll move on to some of the other knives. Would be really nice to see that. And we got that triangular, triangulated, I think is the word I use, or whatever, I don't remember. Uh, lanyard hole. And I actually like that too. It doesn't add any bulk to the knife. Very nice. Let's get this guy open and do some size comparison. There you go. There's our rat model one are buck 110 and do i i'm always looking for a delica those things are always trying to run off on me but there is uh the burnt orange delica and we're going to throw some other small knives up here uh and a couple of other d2 12c28 knives or 12c27 knives there's the spike it's a bigger 12C27 knife with FRN handles. There is the Paladin yet to be released as of this video. It may, or as of the recording of this video, it may be released by the time the video airs. But very nice knife there. Uh, some more stuff that you guys will recognize in the small knife category. Right there is a Wee Wisp. There's a Rectifier. And we'll get those out of the way. Might as well throw this guy up here. We got a bench made proper. And just because I like it, there is a Best Tech Goblin. 
Anything else we need to throw up there? Well, yeah. Just because this guy is cool. That guy is like the hot rod, super hot model, whatever, for the small wee knives. Just a super good looking knife. And, uh, oh, one more. One more. There is our Mass Drop Gent. Another knife in right about the same blade size category. Now, it is all these other knives we've looked at, though, these are all those light, medium duty knives with either hollow grinds or really thin blades that aren't really meant to be kind of thrashed on. Well, the thorn here is the opposite of that. We got that thick, heavy duty handle, we got those nice, thick liners, and it's really meant to be thrashed on, or at least be able to take it. Still, Nice little short blade, though. And let's get a look at that guy. We're swedged across the top. And we're still not chamfered like I'd like to see at the top of that swedge. But, you know, we're $52. I, I kind of have to... I don't know. But, very nice looking blade in that 12C27. Just really, really nice. Uh like what they've done with the two-tone. I like they got the black over the top. Just, like I said, really nice. And it's 2.98 inches with an edge length of 2.87 and that pretty thin blade stock. You know, I'll grab that piece of paper. You guys always like to see things cut. Well, I guess because Knife Channel, you want to see things cut because that's what we're here for. And there you go. And that's a major advantage of the 12C28 or 12C27. This stuff is a razor steel, and it holds a fine edge. Now, does it hold it for a long time? Uh, no. But it'll hold a good working edge for a very reasonable amount of time and a fine edge for a little while. Now, people have been upset that Best Tech has went to this stainless steel over D2. Well, they haven't. We just looked at the Paladin. It's a newer knife, not even released as of this recording, and it's back in D2. And as we've talked about a few times here on the channel, Best Tech is trying to get their D2 figured out. They, they're doing some performance testing with vendors, trying to find a vendor that is going to give them consistent, good D2 so that there's no more problems with the D2. That's big of them, and they're also trying to get knives out to you, and they chose 12C27. Uh, it's a steel that I haven't used a lot, but the 14C28N, which is a the next version of this steel that Kershaw uses. I've used a lot of that, and I actually like this stuff. I like it better than VG10. Do I like it better than D2? Well, uh, you know, I don't know. I like the, you know, v D2's hard. I like that. I like that it holds its edge for quite a while. But this holds a finer edge by a long shot. You can get a really fine edge on this stuff, and you can strop up a really fine edge from a slightly dull edge pretty easy so the trade-off here whenever you're talking about going from d2 to 12c27 is the d2 is going to hold an okay edge for what seems like forever this one is not however if you maintain this with just a strop doesn't have to be anything fancy just a strop fairly regularly it's going to stay sharp for a good long time and I've had some of those Kershaw knives that I have just stropped regularly and never really ever had to take it and truly sharpen it uh, after I got it sharp the first time. So, you know, your mileage may vary there. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the steel stuff. Uh, I'm not too upset about it at 52 bucks. Uh, is it as great a deal as getting D2? You know, I don't know. Probably not, but I... I've got a soft spot for the Sandvik Steels, and I like to see them making their way back into some of those knives. In the, uh, you know, there's other brands that are getting them into knives between 30 and 60 bucks, and it's just a great thing. And from here, guys, we're going to go to our pause and read card, and I will be right back with you. All right, guys, mechanically, this thing is just like all of the other uh, D2 and G10 knives, except that it's got 12C27 in it. And 
uh, one of the cool things they did is they went in these liners and counterboard the liners so that you've got your bearings. We'll see if you can see them down in there. Yeah, you can kind of see them down in there. They have a recess to set down into, which is a beautiful thing to keep crap out of the bearings. You know, you put the open face of the bearing down in the recess and you don't have to worry about them uh, as much because they don't have as much surface area sticking out that can, or open area sticking out that can collect junk. And that is always a beautiful thing. But other than that, you know, ceramic ball bearing, ceramic detent, we still have the free spinning pivot. Uh, however, whenever we look at the Grampus, the Grampus has a D-shaped pivot. So, and it still looks the same on the outside. So maybe that's coming to some of the newer knives. Uh, we do have this pocket clip that's sitting up on that little pedestal. As we'll see in a minute, it works fine, but uh, I, I have to worry or be concerned that some people aren't going to like that or that you know, I haven't carried the knife a whole lot, so it might not be as great as I'm thinking it is. But anyhow, mechanically, as you can see, the action for a light bladed small knife is pretty dang good. It's one of those knives where if you break the detent, it's going to open. And it's just a great thing. And let's grab the Levi's and stick it in there. There's our Levi's and off it goes. I've had this thing in Carhartts. I've had it in 511s. No problems there. And we'll zoom in a little bit. Everything looks really good. My only concern is, is this does make the knife seem a little thicker in the pocket. It wasn't a problem, but may bother some of you. And the knife, like the Beluga, is a little short. However, it doesn't lead your hand in the pocket quite as well as some of the other knives, but it doesn't seem to be a problem, and it didn't seem to be a problem whenever I was carrying it. So, uh pretty good there now you do have a bit of a protuberance there with your uh flipper tab but jimping's on this side no jimping on this side and it's well rounded right there i don't think it's a big deal so let's move on to ergonomics and there you go simple handle designs win every time and that's what we've got here a very simple handle design that you can get a hold of any way you want to and you know i really really like that uh does have a forward finger toil let's see how that works just enough room that i'm not going to cut myself very well done i like it a lot and guys that pretty much covers the thorn so what what are my final conclusions on it I don't think I'm a huge fan of the pocket clip. Is it a problem? No. I just visually, I'm not a huge fan of it. I am a big fan of what they're doing with the milling on that handle where we're getting a little gription on there. I like what they did with the lanyard hole to keep it out of the way for me because I'm not going to use it. I like the fact that they are polishing up those liners. Look good. Uh, the 12C27. Like I said earlier, I like seeing 12C27, 14C28 in. <clears throat> All those steels back in knives in that less expensive category because I actually like the steels. People are going to argue with me over that, and people are going to tell me this is better or that's better or whatever, but I haven't had problems with the Sandvik steels. You just have to keep them stropped up. So... Uh, and even if you're a little lax on the stropping, you can usually strop one of these back into a good edge with very little effort, really. So, you know, I look at it from that angle, and I think, you know, for a lot of people, the 12C27 may be perfect. Instead of trying to use D2, which is hard and hard to sharpen, and all of those things. So... I'm I'm not upset about it. You can be upset if you want to. I like the ergonomics. They didn't miss on a, as always on the uh, jumping across the spine. It needs to be a little more forward so I can use that forward finger toil a little better. And you know the free spinning pivot. Don't like that. But overall, at fifty two bucks, if you have never used Sandvik steels. 
don't be scared of them. Are they going to make you happy? Heck, I don't know. But I don't think you're going to be terribly disappointed in them. I know that I haven't ever been, so you know you just have to be a little more on top of it with the stropping. And uh, and that's it, guys. Uh, I like the size. I like the little blade. That little kind of a flat blade, and I didn't do that for you, but we'll get this little Samsung phone out here and lay it against there. Uh, see, it's a flat back or straight back blade. You know, no drop point there. But I kind of like it. I like it a lot. Uh, and you guys... Well, you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to check out the apexnews.com where you can see all the news we put up right there on the front page. At the top of the page, you can click on the show notes and you can see the show notes from the Apex News. The Apex News is a show I do generally every Wednesday right here on this channel. It's always me. In the future, we're going to be having guests and other people helping me out with the Apex News. And we keep a set of show notes and all the links because I go through... All of, <coughs> excuse me, the YouTube stuff, and I try to find you the best information I can find in the new channels, and I go through the blogosphere and try to find all the stories there so that you guys can stay up to date on the Knife News with the Apex News right here on YouTube, and you can also listen to the Apex News podcast over on theapexnews.com. The podcast is an exact mirror of the live or of the Apex News that's here on YouTube. That way we're not putting out two different things, but you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.